Okay, so just a little geology lesson here. Um, let's talk about the indicators of gold and mineral deposits. What you should look for and um, how to do it and everything like that in between. So, the first thing you want to do um, is know the geology of your area, the, what mining district you're in. Um, we're in the Victoria Mining District for, for most of our properties right now. Um, so there's certain common things that are common for each district. Um, if you're looking for an area, search out online before, um, before you head out. Read about the geology, read old assessment reports, look at maps. Um, an example for British Columbia would be searching minfile.ca, mineral titles online, or propertyfile.ca. These are some of the good resources that can be valuable for us British Columbia prospectors. So I just thought I'd bring up a few samples so everyone's not uh, bored. So we can take a look at these while I'm uh, talking. Okay, so when you're researching, you want to look at the geology, um, general rock types associated with productive mines and old workings. Um, an example would be, say, if you had a past producing mine with gold, silver, and copper, which is associated with a schistose rock and quartz veins, and you're prospecting and you find a quartz vein in the vicinity um, surrounded by schistose rock, then that can be an indication of a mineral bearing deposit. It's also important to identify rocks not associated with valuable minerals. That way you're not wasting your time prospecting a worthless area. Okay, so next is contact zones. Um, quite often the rock type does not matter, just that some type of contact has occurred. This means there is often extremely high temperatures, pressure. Um, these can cause fissures to form, pushing mineral um, like gold, silver, copper to surface. Okay, so the next thing is ground and soil changes. Um, they're both indicators of a contact point as well. If there's little bedrock exposed in the area you're prospecting, you can often determine the contact point or different rock types by a change in the soil color. So, um, for instance, if you have soil that's gray and you have a one meter wide patch of iron stained gravel and sand soil, then again, more gray soil, you may have found a possible contact zone or vein with oxides leaching into the soil from the bedrock. Okay, so kind of a continuation of the last point. Um, so you got your, your iron oxide staining, your sulfides, um, hematite, magnetite, those are good things to look for the, um, when you have a placer deposit if you're panning for gold. Uh, a lot of times you'll find magnetite um, and hematite and that's a good indication of that there's gold present as well. Um, if there's a lot of quartz veins um, or deposits um, in the area, I know there's a lot on our properties on Vancouver Island, uh, so this is an indication. Um, and remember, iron oxides look for a reddish rust colored staining, and for iron sulfides, you want to look for a yellowish sulfur-like uh, color. Okay, so next is your quartz. Um, a lot of minerals are associated and found with quartz. This may not always be true, um, because quartz is also the second most abundant mineral on Earth. So this is where your research comes into play, and if there's an area that has past producers with lots of quartz, um, or even current producers, a quartz vein may be a good spot to look. However, also a quartz vein that um, is just a quartz vein and there's no history of any mineralization in the area may just in fact be quartz. 
Okay, so some of the best places um, that we find minerals are generally old and ancient riverbeds. Um, these are often untouched and haven't been touched ever. So it's a good spot to look for your gold. Um, you may find other uh, silver, copper in your pan as well if you're uh, doing panning. Logging roads, um, those are a huge one for us. There's a lot of logging in the area, um, a lot of tree clearing, which often exposes new outcrops. Um, these should all be searched. Um, also near old workings, quarries, open cuts, shafts, adits, old mines, uh, there may be an extension of an ore body that's been missed. Um, by the old prospectors, so you may want to search that area as well. And again, your contact zones where two rock tapes meet, uh, where your soil changes color. Very good, very good one is uh, river canyons. Um, a lot of time you'll have your rivers wash through a canyon, erode over years and years and years. Um, it can leave a placer deposit, and you can also find um, hard rock deposits um, as it erodes through the rock. Um, another one is areas with volcanic activity. Um, if there's currently volcanic activity, I would not go around it, um, but uh, past volcanic activity is also a good spot to look. Anyway, um, Hope you enjoyed the video and some samples and a little spiel about geology. So now uh, get out and go prospecting and uh, till the next video, have a good one.